So good morning, everybody. Uh, don't worry, you don't have to respond to me that way. First of all, I must thank the organizers for inviting a few of us to come and share what a little bit that we know about this humongous subject. A very, very special thanks to the organizers and the way they made people sit on the stage. Because to my left was a mathematician, and I'm very privileged because years ago I was also in mathematics. But that gives no cause for me to assume that I'm very good in mathematics. I was not very good in mathematics. Did I like the subject? How many of you like mathematics? Good Lord. <laughs> oh my God, I never expected so many hands to go up. But anyway, thank you. For people who don't like mathematics, raise your hand. Oh, that's a lot more people. I belong to that tribe. So, in college, I wanted to be an engineer, could not be an engineer, and ended up getting the only subject available in a college, which was mathematics. Did I like it? No. Did I do well in mathematics? Yes. <laughs> yes. I was, in fact, so good in mathematics that um, I was the best outgoing student of my college. And Part of this is because if you don't get what you like, you like what you get. And, and just make a meal of it. Whatever you don't like, never mind. But that's not the subject I'm going to be speaking to you about. And um, my slide has a mind of its own. Uh, how many of you like stories? Shameless people. <laughs> I thought all of you would be wanting to look at frameworks and talk about the digital world and what, what more can you expect from consultants. And we have Mr. Suri who is a, a top-notch consultant of the country who is going to be speaking to you again. But I'm going to be speaking to you about a potter. So one day the potter was at his wheel and he was going to make hookahs. When you try to make hookahs, it's, it's an intricate process. Suddenly his wife chants on him and said, why are you making hookahs? You should be making pots. Why should I make pots? I can make more money with hookahs. No, you must make pots. Pots are good because it holds water, you, in summers, it keeps the water cool, and it is good for everybody. But hookah is something which is about fire, you inhale it, it's, it's not good, it just spoils people's health. You must do pot, not hookahs, okay? Now, like most husbands, most husbands, you listen to their spouses. So the potter was no different, he said, okay, he started to prepare a pot. When he started to make a pot, suddenly there was a voice that said, Hey, hello? What are you doing to me? He turned around, nobody was around. He says, Who is this? He says, I am the clay. What are you doing to me? He said, You were once a hookah, and I am now going to turn you into a pot. So I am going to change your shape. And why do you do that? He says, Because. He didn't want to say because my wife said so. Huh? Ego comes in, right? So he says, because of an idea that my wife gave me. And I like that idea. Oh, so an idea changed your mind. He said, yes, an idea changed my mind. And then the, the pot said, an idea changed your mind. But that idea changed my life. That idea changed my life. Ah, by the way, this is more to tell you that the story is over. Part of this is because as you sit through the deliberations of the next four or five hours, you will get a lot of ideas. One idea of that could change, perhaps not your life, but the way that you look at things. And I'm hoping 
But as we go through the day, you will get and find that one little idea. I'm going to be speaking to you about... Hey, by the way, it's also my intention to put you guys to sleep, okay? So that's also one of my intentions. So I'm going to bore you with slides because most consultants do that. So I've got a lot of slides. So here is a wanderer. And the wanderer once was an ape. Is now evolved at some point in time. Hopefully not. We shouldn't become humanoids. But this is what is happening today. Much of what we have is about this little boy who lives in a digital world, digital natives, not Luddites like me. They're, they're very, very knowledgeable. I mean, you give a child and they will know how to work what happens on your PDA. They are very, very bright. And what is happening today is, once upon a time, we used to be firing people that you're not good enough, this is not good, that's not good, you have not performed. This is what organizations used to be doing. Today, the shoe is on the other foot. Today, employees fire organizations. When people leave, they're actually firing the employer. It's not the other way around. It could be for millions of reasons, but part of that is to do with the environment, the culture. Some of us in the room, and I see Mr. Khanduja here, and he will know that this is how we started our lives. Slowly we went into this. Mercifully we came on to something which was close here. Today, we work in environments which has become, which has become very classy. But is this enough? No. The one thing that really changed was the COVID. It changed our lives, our orientation, the way that we looked at it. We became far more digitalized. The digitalization happened far quicker during and post-COVID. Oh, by the way, I don't know whether you noticed, a lot of empty seats. I don't know about your organizations, but many organizations are suffering. This. They don't have a, more than about 30 people, 30% 30 of the people who come to work. Organizations are also learning to cope with this. Some people prefer this. Some people also prefer this. But at the core of it, they all would certainly want to work. And there's an important slide that I want to pause a bit. So if you look at the x-axis, you will find the rate of change. The rate of change that we have today, over the years from 1970s, all the way until today, the fastest growing is obviously technology. The rate of change of people, the way people have changed, I'm talking about people evolving, that has changed rapidly, but technology is a step ahead. The third one, this, all the disruption that you see in the business is the next. So that's about what's happening with the business. This is very hard hitting, very difficult for us to, to even sum up this. The rate of change of HR professionals has not kept up, kept up even with the business or with the people at large, forget even technology. So there's a lot of work that we have to be doing. By the way, this is research which has been done by Deloitte all over the world. And a um, um, substantial part of India has been covered as part of this research as well. Good news. 90% of organizations believe that they want to go digital. How do you define digital? Smack, social, mobile, analytics, cloud. So if you're into all of this or any of this or getting there, that is digital. How prepared are we? Only 22% of all organizations are really ready, which means about one in five is ready, and that's the readiness gap. So there's a really large gap between the aspirations and where we are today. Organizations want to be agile. They want to do a lot of stuff. But 
What we need at this point in time is a vision. A vision which looks at what one can really see, what one can sense. This envisioning is important because you're not looking at just the next couple of years, looking at what should happen, let's say, five years from now. CIOs in our days used to be people who made sure that the uptime of the computers was high. Today, they are strategic part of a business. Today, we speak to the CIOs because we want to make sure that we are ahead of the curve when it comes to a digital experience for several reasons. So, envisioning is where we all start. When you're talking about digital, the why is, why do we have to go digital? We have to go digital because, not because the world is headed that way, because it just makes life a lot more easy. The ease of doing business. If technology is far ahead, if people are far ahead, business is far ahead, we better buck up and start getting there. So it starts with what do we really envision? Two, what do we think? Which are the places where we have to really double down on the digital focus that we have? One point in time, many of us in this room are aware, we used to start with the recruitment. And today, it's not only about recruitment, it's the entire life cycle. Even when people leave, you still have an alumni network. And how do you make this so seamless that people can come in? And I was looking at some of the things that, that people are trying to do. Everybody has heard about chat GPT. And we are trying to use chat GPT right in the way that we have onboarding, pre-boarding, onboarding, post-boarding, performance management. You name it, everything is there. The question is, what is the kind of technology that you will use getting there? If you have seen it and if you have thought it through, how will you decide and then how will you make sure that you get the value from that? One of the things that HR professionals are not very good at is talking about the value that we bring to the business. Would you agree? The reason why somebody made a statement this morning saying, anybody can get into HR. Yes. Anybody can get into HR, but it takes a lot for anybody to get into HR to be as good as a good HR professional. So what is the edge? The edge is beyond looking at that, what is the value that you can deliver. It's not about just deciding on what your digital strategy. You should be able to speak like a CIO. Move on. So you would like to really see what a good HR field of opportunity looks like. This is a very busy slide, so I'm going to let this be on for a, a, a little bit of time. You can start with an engagement platform, you can look at cognitive, AI. This is a great wheel which looks at several aspects. So you, you can also look at what is experience. One of the things people are focusing on is just the employee experience. Right from the time, right from the time they come in for an interview, till the time they exit an organization and beyond, what is the unified experience that they get? I remember years ago, I went in for an interview, and then the boss of that place walked past. And when he walked past, the receptionist looked at me and she said, please stand up. Please stand up. Please rise. So, what do we do when you go in for interviews? You got to listen to people. I listened to her. I just picked up my bag and walked out of the door. I felt this is not the organization that I should join. Now, there's a good side to that. The person who was walking past noticed this. He called me a month later. All the while, he had been sending me notes, apologizing for it. And he said, I'm sorry for what my receptionist did. And I really would like to meet with you. 
Fast forward, I joined that organization because I didn't stay there for a very long time. Long time is, you know, today people have different notions of what is long and short. I stayed there for three years. So that's a long, that's not a long period of time. Um, I'm giving you examples of people who have done this well in learning. If you look at Shell, Shell has used augmented reality. And um, they look at people who get trained pre, post, and look at what is the value that has happened. Shell has done this very well. If you look at IKEA, they actually have a robot. What she does is she interviews almost 1,500 people every day. So they have brought in digital HR to a very different level. Now imagine, not only it's a matter of scheduling, it's a matter of interviewing, making sure that post that there is a way in which you conclude that interview on shortlist, you know the whole drill that happens. IKEA has been able to do that reasonably well. Bipro, more than anywhere between 12 to 20 assessments are made of people as part of their assessment centers. The entire succession planning today is on a platform. So they have used digital HR in a very major way. If you look at Mahindra, the Mahindra Leadership Center is another one which has used this really, really well. Unilever looks at gamification and pulls in almost like anywhere between 15 to 20 games and through looking at neuroscience's lengths of the reactions of people, they are able to select people and this is what they are, they've been able to do using digital HR. Let me move away from digital HR for a moment. As much as we talk about what technology can do, there are, I talk to you about the why, let me speak to you about the what. There are some basics that I don't think we can move away from. One of the basics is, how do we really, in organizations, help people along the way? This is not something which is taught either in schools or in colleges, but this is something that is learned. It's a learned skill. How do you learn to be curious? And curiosity as a value today is extremely high. Why? Because when you look at data, the most important thing, it starts with data, right? It starts with data, and from data, you get information. From information, you get insights, and from insights, you're supposed to be acting. Let me give you an example. Years ago, we discovered that on the 289th day, we did an average of people leaving the firm, 289th day was the average of the time when people left the organization. So it made a lot of sense to start to look at people who are likely to leave and find a way of influencing that. So how do you do that? When do people leave? Do they leave the organization on the day they give the resignation letter or before? Much before. Normally it happens about three months prior. So we worked it ourselves backwards and we said, okay, let's make it three months. 200th day, we will make sure that we have a good proper sit down with a person, making sure that they understand, that we understand what they have, and then get into a level of understanding that ask the basic question, hey, uh, is he going to be firing me? Is this person going to be firing an organization? And is there a way that we can do some amends? Most people leave for a few basic reasons. The reason why they joined organizations are very different from the reasons why they leave organizations. So when we are looking at the data, can we be curious about it? Can we also be mindful? Yesterday, I was listening to one of the uh, spiritual leaders. When I say spiritual leader, he is a child accountant who just started something. He is now, I mean, he's a, he founded a college. 
And then he decided that this is not what he wants to do, so he set up a, an institution which is now in about 63 different countries. I spent some time with him, and one of the things that he told me was, mindfulness is well-being, and well-being is being mindful. And it took some time for me to understand this. Mindfulness, perhaps, is staying in the moment. Just staying in the moment. How do I explain this? So let me try. Sorry? Sure. Sure. Okay. So, my, um, my greatest guru, my mentor, somebody that I really have a lot of regard and respect for is a lady called Dr. Indra Parikh. Indra Parik, very well known to everybody, but I think she's very special, very, very special, very, very dear to me. One day, I asked Indra, I said, Indra, I've been speaking to you for about 15 minutes. It almost seems like ageless. How do you do it? So he said, Latin, let me tell you a story. It so happened that on the 10th of December of a certain year, she was called to Stockholm along with her husband, who was a physicist. What happens on the 10th of December each year at Stockholm, Sweden? Nobel Prizes? Remember? So, she was invited to the Nobel Prize Investiture Ceremony. And there was a grand ball. So for the grand ball, what Indira did was, what she liked doing, she wore a very pretty silk sari. Everybody was in black gowns. It was one of those sit-down dinners and all the Nobel laureates, they came all well-dressed, dark suits, all those kinds. She was a sinosure of everybody's eyes. Everybody was looking at her. And they all wanted to make conversation with her. She went up to a Nobel laureate and said, Sir, Dr. So-and-so, is it okay if I spend 30 minutes with you tomorrow? And as soon as she said this, her AD, that person's ADC, came very quickly and said, hey, you cannot do this. I mean, this time is very precious and all this in a very different foreign accent. And she apologized. But the Nobel laureate looked at her and she said, of course I'll spend time with you. Tomorrow, 7.30, my office. And then the ADC very thoughtfully added 15 minutes. And she was on time, 7.30, she was ushered in. She sat with a Nobel laureate all of 15 minutes and she said, Nathan, it seemed like I spent 10 years with a gentleman. He had nothing on his table. There were no gadgets, nothing, not even a single piece of paper. And I was mesmerized with what he had to share with me. In the moment, I understood what is being mindful. And perhaps that's something that I learned. Coming back. So perhaps this is what we need to be doing. Can we be mindful? This morning I was having a cup of tea and I'd asked that person to bring in half a cup of tea. He gave me a full cup. And then I said, um, I wanted half a cup. He said, Adha tea liji. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. But I didn't want to be wasteful. Anyways, this world is a lot about how we can collaborate. Don't forget, this is the single most important thing that we do. How do we build trust? In all the digital world that we have, recognize this is one part which is extremely important. Beyond the connectedness that we have, and uh, Hitarafai, a very, very special applause to you. <laughs> Terrific job. In, in, in really getting a lot of this up. Any amount of digital mentoring is not the same as a mentoring that happens in the moment on the field. Just that few minutes makes the big change. 
we are all in a hurry. I was not promoted for eight years of my life. As soon as you come into an organization, after one year, they confirm you. I also got confirmed. All my friends were made officers. They said, you're marketing officer, this officer, that officer, finance officer. But I was not an HR officer. So I went up to my boss, who was a very kind man, and I said, I have not been, I, I don't have a designation. He says, what happened to you? He says, I got confirmed. You need a designation. He said, yes. So what were you? Management training. What are you now? Confirmed. Okay, your new designation is confirmed management training. <laughs> <laughs> Did I like it? I didn't like it. But I stayed with the company because it was a wonderful company. Eight years I was not promoted. One day, I remember the day, 13th of Jan, Lori. 14th is Shankaranti. I went up to my boss and I said, hey, I have not been promoted. And this has happened to me for a long, long time. So he says, hey, this is festive season. You cannot be doing this. Come and see me at home. 10 o'clock in the morning. Went up to him. 10 in the morning. What do I find? Very beautiful lawn. And he's got two chairs. There was tea. And as soon as I went up, he gave me an envelope. And the envelope, as I opened, says, you have been promoted as personal manager. Now, that is like two levels up. Two levels up. I was shocked. I was shocked. I looked up at, at him and I said, uh, are you really sure? Personal manager like a senior manager. So I said, are you very sure? He said, that this is not a typo. Because I was, you know, in the moment I was feeling happy, but I wanted to make sure it's not a typo. So I asked him and he said, no, yes, we are promoting you. And then he made a mark. He says, like the bamboo, all the years, you are growing roots. A bamboo does not grow immediately. It takes anywhere between five to six years for the roots to gather and then the bamboo shoots. It's almost like six inches per week and it can reach a height of almost 80 feet. Today we don't have the patience. Can we be patient? Can we in some way encourage people who are around us to be mindful and also be patient? Can we find a way to hold up, to lift up, this is one of my favorite stories. I realize I've got only three minutes more. Story? Okay. I realized when I joined an Indian company, I was working a little late at night. In the far corner I found there was a light on. There was singing which was happening. Somebody was singing. So I went up to this gentleman and I said, you seem to be very happy. He said, sir, I'm making payroll slips. <laughs> so I said, it's me kunsi badi baat. And he says, sir, you don't understand. One extra zero <laughs> makes somebody very happy. And one zero less. Oh, they'll be so unhappy. So my job is important. And by the way, I'm doing some work. Can I meet you tomorrow? So I said, yes, come and see me tomorrow. What was the time? Time was 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, he walks into my office. First question that I ask him, as he normally asks is, what is your background? So that I've got my MBA. Now normally you would expect, and I had come in with a certain background and all that, I expected him to say I'm from so and so college. What college? What was, where, what is your MBA, where is your MBA from? And he said, my MBA I did from ABC College of Management. ABC, I've never heard of this. They say, how will you hear, sir? After the first year, they closed down the place. <laughs> so, I said, they closed down the place? Yes, I was the first and last student out there. It's over. <laughs> what did you do before that? I did my arts, history. And the way he said history was as if he was talking about mathematics or engineering, computer science or whatever is, is the one. Like a doctor, you get a doctor and then... So I said, yeah. History? Then I added very thoughtfully, what was your percentage? He looked at me and he said, 36%, sir, 36%. <laughs>
So I said, 26%? And you're happy about this? So he said, sir, you don't understand. If they had not given me 36%, they would have to suffer me for one more year. So they cleared me. I quite like this guy. Huh? Very happy guy. There's a call. Sanjay Bhaduri was on the call. And he says, Nathan, I need a regional manager of West Human Resources. I looked at him and I, I was on the call and I said, I've got just the right man for you. Please make sure you're kind to him. Put the phone down. Looked at this payroll clerk. And I asked him, are you ready to be our next regional manager, human resources, West working out of Bombay? So he said, sure. <laughs> and then he asked me a question. He said, are you, are you very sure? <laughs> are you very sure? I said, why? He said, sir, there are, it's five levels higher than what job I'm doing. And I said, don't worry about that. Will you go? Last minute, there was a question. He said, do you know Hindi? And he said, Tora, Tora. <laughs> Tora, Tora means this guy has no knowledge of Hindi, but I took a chance. Fast forward, many things happened. Uh, two, three months back, I got a call, and this person on the line said, I'm again being asked to go to Miami, and I'm really tired, Mr. Nathan. So I said, why are you tired going to a place like Miami, beach? He, this is an all expenses paid, by the company for the top 0.001 performance in the world. He says, I'm going there for the third time, sir. <laughs> At least they could have put me in a place like Switzerland. I said, don't look at gift horse in the mouth, enjoy your time. And then I was smiling, put the phone down. My wife said, why are you smiling? I said, I'm smiling because, I'm smiling because the person is going to Miami for the third time. And once upon a time, he used to be a payroll clerk. Once upon a time, he used to be a payroll clerk. It is not the education that you get from whichever colleges and institutions we come from. It is what we do with the education that we get there. Part of this to do with what we do in Dikshil HR as well. What do you do with all the tools that we have? I realize my time is up, so I'm just going to say, when there's an opportunity, speak up. When there's an opportunity, make sure that you show up. When there's an opportunity, take up. When there's an opportunity, build up. Because in all of what we do, this is what we do at the core of all the actions that we are about. So on that note, I'm going to end where I started which is the potter. I'm hoping that this day is engaging and you will walk back with at least one idea in your heart. Thank you very much for your time and attention.